And I think that's like a perfect segue <laughs> into into talking about uh, cephalo medullary nails. And, and I think this is at least what I've seen. Um, we use this definitely a lot here in the U.S. as far as treating these um, these uh, these types of fractures or these proximal femur fractures, these hip fractures. And can you kind of talk about the, I guess, the different classes of cephalomedullary nails and how they work? Sure. I think the the first two, the first distinction to understand is whether you're using one of these nails to treat a geriatric uh, intertroch or subtroch fracture, or whether it's a young person high energy fracture. Okay. Uh, because there's sort of two different kinds of nails that are designed for those applications. So the the Synthes TFN, the Stryker Gamma Nail, the Smith & Nephew um, Intertan, uh, Biomets of Fixus Nails. Those are just like the picture you're showing here. They're nails that have a really, really big proximal diameter. They have a really big lag screw. And they're meant to be almost like bone substituting devices in very osteoporotic geriatric proximal femurs. And then on your previous slide, you had one line about re reconstruction nails. So there you go, smaller proximal diameter with mul multiple lag screws. Those are more for high energy intertroch or subtroch fractures in young people that have good bone quality where you don't need as big of a nail, you don't need as big a screws uh, because the bone quality is gonna be really good to accept those devices. So I, I try to think of cephalomedullary nails, am I treating a geriatric uh, hip fracture or am I treating a young person high energy proximal femur fracture? So that's the first distinction. Okay. Um, and since we're focusing on the intertroch fractures, I would say you have these, this nice delineation uh, of the impaction type, the compression type. Uh, so your, your next slide shows, I think the Synthes TFN, uh, where you see it's, it's not really a screw, it's that blade. Yeah. Uh, and the idea behind that is rather than drilling out bone for a screw, rather than removing bone, you use a device like this, where as you advance that blade, it spins, and it compacts or impacts the bone around it. So the idea is maybe that you're preserving bone uh, rather than taking bone away. Okay. So it's, you know, like any of these other nails, I think using it for the right application, uh, obtaining a good reduction of the fracture and putting your lag screw uh, in a deep and central position, aiming for that good tip apex distance. Those are the same techniques you want to apply, uh, you know, really for any of those fractures in any of these nails. Yeah. And I was reading and I know it was saying that um, for these, you use it in more osteoporotic bone, because if you have a young patient with really good bone and you try to, you know, you're, you're hammering this down that it may actually distract at that fracture side, unless you hold it, you know, reduced with a, right. you know, a, a rubber clamp or whatever reduction uh, tool that you use. Yeah. And I think that that gets exactly back to the point of what kind of fracture are you trying to treat? Um, if you got someone with really, really good non-osteoporotic bone, maybe going to a smaller diameter reconstruction nail would be better because uh, you're going to have good bone quality. In that case, drilling out a path for a screw is safe because the screw is going to have really good purchase. But exactly like you say here, an osteoporotic bone, maybe impacting or compacting the bone around the blade is advantageous. And when we talk about failure and we talk about medial penetration of the blade, we're we just talking about the blade going through the femoral head when that does happen. It's a, you know, this is a good point. So when, when we do see failed fixation of intertroch fractures, uh, I mean, sometimes we see the lag screw uh, back out or do something funny, okay. but more often, more often than not, it's the bone failing around the nail. Um, so what, what you see is whether it's because the bone is so poor, or whether you didn't have a good reduction, you didn't have your lag screw or blade in a good tip apex distance. What you see is the bone shears around the rod or the screw, and then eventually it just falls off of it and displaces. Um, so you know, occasionally you get the nail breaking. Like sometimes we've seen these nails break at the lag screw hole in the proximal part of the nail. But that's usually due to a technical error when the surgeon inserts it. Uh, that usually means you were drilling the nail or doing something you scored the nail, mm. uh, put a weak point in it. But usually, it's you know it's not the it's not the rod and the screw that fail. It's usually the bone that fails around it. And do you? I guess how do you choose between you know using the blade with you know the impaction versus using a lag screw? Um, I think uh, oftentimes that decision is either driven by how you were trained you become okay. more comfortable with one certain type of device. Um, the other part of it, you may be 
the hospital system you work in may have uh, contracts with certain vendors. And sometimes oh. that can dictate uh, your options available to you. You may not have five different cephalomedullary nails available to you. Your hospital may say, uh, you know, you need to use striker gamma because we're a striker hospital. Um, I think mm -hmm. the, the different nails have different, they may have different selling points. The TFN has the, we don't take bone away, we impact it. Intertan has the, we have active compression of the fracture. Um, Gamma probably has some selling point as well. Uh, but I think they're all pretty much equivalent if they're applied sensibly. So the limitations may be the comfort level of the surgeon and the hospital or healthcare system they work in. Right, and since we just mentioned the intertan class, um, this, the intertan, their method, it's pretty almost, almost the same. Like, you know, they have a, they have a, um, you know, a, a larger diameter, you know, proximal portion of the nail, but they get their compression through the screws interdigitating. That's how you get compression through the fracture site, correct? Right. It's an, it was an, it's an answer to a problem that was created by an older type of nail. I know you had a picture of a reconstruction nail with two independent lag screws. So this idea of people, this is a, you can look at the reduction of the fracture, you can critique or whatever you want. Um, this is a problem of fracture instability, and it means the femoral head and proximal segment are, are wobbling around the nail. Uh, this is probably a fracture that should have been repaired with a long nail. Uh, so this is a short nail. Right. But what happens with these independent lag screws, as the femoral head rocks back and forth, it advances one screw and the other one backs out. And this people, there's papers on this, it's called the Z effect. Um, yeah. And that was a critique of this type of nail and this type of fracture pattern. And so Smith and nephew said, well, we don't want our two screw device to be subject to that Z effect. So they designed intertan, which has these interdigitated or connected screws, uh, which also have the ability to gain, uh, excuse me, to obtain active compression uh, at an intertroch fracture. So those are some of the unique things that they think they bring to the table. Uh, okay. So for the intertan, well, so for the, the recon class, you know, typically that is you have your interlocking screws, two interlocking screws that go approximately into the femoral head, right. which, you know, can kind of help, you know, control some rotation. And those, I think, originally were described for, you know, like complex subtroke and pathological mm -hmm. fractures just to give yep. you a little bit more stability. But like you just it, said, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say this. I think you can, you can pretty clearly see that the Z effect is due to a technical error by the surgeon. I think the, the reduction is okay. It's probably in varus alignment a little bit, but again, mm -hmm. the the choice of a short nail for a subtroke fracture like this, it's one of those points you say, this is a very unstable fracture. This probably merits a long locked cephalomedullary nail or a long locked recon nail. So the Z effect can happen with these independent lag screws, but it's usually a result of some sort of technical error or malreduction on the part of the surgeon.